Hi there. Welcome to Business Leadership Podcast. In this podcast, I interview successful business leaders and industry experts to help you grow your business. I truly believe that sometimes a single insight can completely change your business directions and allow you to achieve your business goals. In this episode, I interview Roberta Madison. Uh, she is a principal at Madison Consulting, keynote speaker, and author of six books, including her uh, recent release and international bestseller, Can We Talk? Seven Principles for Managing Difficult Conversations at Work. As a business leader, as you know, that uh, you know, building a strong, productive team and acquiring the right talent is always a challenging. Roberta, she's a subject matter expert on, on, on this topic, and she's been helping uh, CEOs on a strategic matters related to talent. I think you will enjoy my discussion with her, especially when she talks about how to build a strategy around the talent and, and how to uh, you know, include a training as a part of the strategy as well. She also talks about uh, you know, what changed during this pandemic and the right expectation, what should staff you know, expect from our business leaders and also in reverse, what should business leaders should expect from our staff as well. If you like this content, before we go, don't uh, forget to send us your feedback and subscribe to this channel. Until next time, enjoy. Hi guys, welcome to Business Leadership Blog. Today, my guest is uh, Roberta Mattison. Um, she's uh, you know, strategic talent advisor. She's been helping business leaders uh, on, on a talent acquisition or streamlining the talent. She's author of multiple books. And uh, you know, she's an um, she's international speaker and she's consultant, she's coach. Um, you know, the, the topic we have today is one of the very, very important. I know a lot of business leaders like myself, we're struggling with the talent and, and she uh, subject matter expert on the talent. So I'm looking forward to learning from you, Roberta, and I'm looking forward to our conversation. Thank you so much for time today. Hey, thanks so much for having me. Okay. So, so walk us through, you know, what, uh, you know, the new book you, you wrote, what inspired to write this book? And, uh, you know, what, what are your thoughts on that? You know, what's going on in the talent market right now? Well, my newest book is called Can We Talk? And it's okay. the seven principles for managing difficult conversations at work. And the reason why that topic is so compelling right now is that a lot of leaders are not having conversations. Mm -hmm. um, kind of, you know, people are out of sight, out of mind. Um, you think, oh, I don't have to address that because I don't have to see this person, even though you see them remotely. Mm -hmm. um, and what, we, what we're seeing happening now is that, you know, talent is just so hard to find that people who've gotten their year-end reviews, uh, maybe it wasn't quite what they expected. And, you know, we're starting to see people actively look for new opportunities mm -hmm. and might not have happened um, in some companies if people would have had these difficult conversations about, you know, what's your performance today? Where do I see you going? Where do you want to go? And how can we work together to get you there? Mm -hmm. So what, what do you mean uh, with the, with the I know, year end review? Uh, you, you know, do you mean that people expected more and they got a less, uh, they got lower reviews or, or they expect a lower and they get a higher review? Like which way is, which way is most of what you see? <laughs> Well, no one has written to me to tell me that they got a lot more than they expected. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But I have had people reach out to me and ask me to help them uh, with their job search strategy, which is something that I do because I help organizations hire and uh, come up with their talent strategy. So I know a lot about what it takes to get in mm -hmm. uh, to a particular company. And so what they're saying is, you know, man, I, I did not expect the conversation that just happened. And I got a lot less money than I anticipated, and mm -hmm. I am ready to bolt. Wow. So uh, what, what caused it? Because business leaders didn't have a conversation early on a year, or they were just surprised at the very end of the year that, you know, they had that conversation. Uh, so it's a little bit, uh, you know, on business leadership on, on, on tab that they should have, uh, have this conversation throughout the year and not wait for the last, last, uh, last quarter. Well, I think a lot of people don't understand that uh, a lot of leaders don't understand that a performance review isn't something you do once a year and you don't just do it, you know, two weeks before you deliver it. You mm -hmm. should be giving people feedback throughout the year because it's impossible to get better and do better work if you have no idea how you're doing. And mm -hmm. a lot of leaders lead under the premise that, you know, if you don't hear from me, everything's fine. But oftentimes it's really not fine. Mm -hmm. And they're just like, I'm too busy to deal with this. And then you have this person who had you dealt with this six months ago. Um, you know, you could have you could have helped them. You could have helped yourself. You could have helped them improve their performance. 
and they could have been a vital part of your team. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's, that's such a, so, you know, does that conversation change a little bit? You know, we, you know, um, a few years back, we used to have a conversation in person to person. We sit in an office, we talk about it. It's diff having a difficult conversation is a little bit easier because you're in person, but not everybody's working remotely. So having those difficult conversations, is that, does that create a challenge for business leaders? I'm glad you brought that up because yeah. I actually wrote, can we talk during the pandemic? Mm -hmm. And I'm glad I did, because in years past, I would have said, you know, you cannot have this conversation on Zoom or on Skype, or you can't do this over the phone. You need to meet in person. Mm -hmm. And as you know, in many situations, we are unable to meet in person. So I've included in the book many scripts and many suggestions as to what you need to do differently. So, for example, mm -hmm. um, right now, you and I are having a conversation. You have no idea, I, I, at least I don't think you do, that right now I have a virtual background. Mm -hmm. So you don't know if my spouse or my kids are sitting here, maybe they're you know across the table, you have no mm -hmm. idea. Mm -hmm. And so if you're going to have one of these kinds of conversations, you want to say to the person ahead of time, you know, I'd like to have a conversation with you. Is there a day and time when we can speak privately? Mm -hmm. Right. So mm -hmm. then I'm like, OK, I should clear the room. I should go into another room because or I should put my headsets on. Right. Mm -hmm. So but normally I don't know about you, but I would just jump into a conversation and mm -hmm. I would have no idea who was around and I wouldn't even think about it. Yeah. No, I, I remember when I started, you know, having a lot of Zoom calls just before that, you know, the, 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 you know, 2019, and I was just putting everything on a speaker because it's easy, right? I will I have a speaker on, I'll have a microphone on. It's easy for me to sit back and talk to my team as well, but then realize that's not the right thing to do. You want to put something, you know, a headset because your family's around, your dogs, your dogs around, you know, you want to make sure that you're respective, you know, having the private conversation if it's not a private as in person, I guess, right? Exactly. And so, you know, you have no idea, right, what's going on in that household right now and that somebody's kid could be there doing their homework or, mm -hmm. you know, doing schoolwork in some cases. So, you know, those are just some tips that you, you want to ask. And then when you start a conversation, you want to say, hey, um, are you in a place where we can talk like confidentially, privately? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then they're like, uh, no, actually, my spouse just came in with groceries. Okay, great. Do you think you could either move somewhere or can we reschedule? Mm -hmm. And especially, you know, not only, you know, what's going on in a household, but, you know, also people's people, what they're going through as a health wise, right? Everybody has a struggle. Everybody's going through challenges, either mental health or physical health or any kind of health challenges as well. I think uh, your point is well taken that you want to make sure the other person is comfortable on the same page as before you have the discussion. Definitely. Does that change that, uh, you know, staff management or leadership skills a little bit? Do leaders have to polish a little bit of skill, how to have those conversations? You know, is it a different ways of looking at things that, that we did in a, in, a, in, a, in a person in office? Yes, I think it takes time to get comfortable, right? So right now you and I are chatting and I'm looking at the camera. I'm not looking at you. Mm -hmm. And so I'm missing any social cues. Like you could be like, what the heck? Why are you saying that? I, can, yeah. I don't even see your face. Yeah. So, you know, it's this balance of trying to look someone in the eye and also read their facial cues. And that brings me to another point. When you're having a difficult conversation, you need to say up front, you know, cameras on, please. Because mm -hmm. I know, like, you know, my son is a, a computer science uh, major in college, and he is a um, developer for a, for a company, a software developer. Mm -hmm. And nine times out of 10, his camera is off. Yeah. That's just the way these guys roll. Yeah, so yeah. sometimes you have to be specific and say, you know, please, I'd like you to have your camera on for this call. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the talent, you know, staff itself. What can they do to help business leaders in this? In this? You know, they know that business leaders going through this. You know, nobody was trained to go through this. You know, we all figuring out as we go through it. Business leaders are learning, same as teams are learning. What can teams do? A uh, few things that they can make a little bit easy conversation for with the business leaders as well. Well, I'm glad you brought that up as well, because when I wrote Can We Talk, this book is not just for leaders. It's for individuals who need to have a difficult conversation with their boss or their peer. 
And so there are many ways that you can start the conversation. And, and I give actual scripts in the book. But what's most important for listeners to understand is that, you know, it's not just your boss who may want to say, can we talk? You mm. may have something that you want to talk about. And so the rules apply to you as well, meaning, you know, getting on your boss's calendar. A lot of organizations have uh, calendar scheduling, right, where you can go on and see what's going on on somebody's calendar before you get on the calendar. Mm -hmm. And for example, you may see, oh, this is great. My boss has meetings from nine to three. I can get in from three to three yeah. fifteen. <laughs> That's not a great strategy. Mm -hmm. If your boss has been in meetings for hours and now you're going to lay something on him or her, or you think this talk is only going to take 15 minutes, you're fooling yourself. Mm -hmm. So you want to be strategic about when you schedule your call with your boss or your coworker. Mm -hmm. So, you know, rushing through the schedule because so much stuff happening during the day, right? Both, for, both you know, business leaders and for the talent, you know, business still goes on and you don't want to rush through it. You want to take your time, make sure that everybody's on the, on the same page. Very yeah. interesting. So what else do you see in, in, in a market, you know, where the business leaders need to pick up on uh, either they have to sharpen their leadership skills, you know, to, to uh, be more considerate for the staff or staff has to do some of the stuff to make sure that they're on the same page. And what are the, some of the things that, that you see that, you know, could be considered before having those conversations or, or uh, you know, building some sort of roadmap? Hey, this is where we, where we are. That's where we need to get to. Well, I think that, you know, well, one of the principles is clarity. And you have to know where you want to go in a conversation. Otherwise, you know, you get off the phone or the Zoom call and you're like, wow, that went great. And the other mm -hmm. person's like, what, what the heck, what just happened? And yeah. so you have to get very clear on, you know, where am I going with this conversation? Is this a conversation that I want to um, use to help somebody improve their skills? Or is this one of those calls where I'm saying we're done? Because those are two very different conversations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, as you think about going into the new year and you think about your teams, you know, I am encouraging my clients to really assess their teams and see who's going on this journey in 2022 mm -hmm. and who needs to disembark right now. And those are some tough conversations, but, you know, you have to let go sometimes in order to move forward. Mm -hmm. You know, a few years back, you know, culture was one of the biggest things that we had when we were working in an office. Very easy to maintain it when you're inside the office. And it was a big part of the teams that they're part of the culture, you know, your corporate culture that you created. And also your, you know, the, the, your mission, what are, you, what are you trying to achieve as a, as, a, as a company? Those two are, you finding that that's hard to still maintain that working in a, in a remote environment? Or are they still part of that discussion as well? When you're having a tough conversation, cultural definitely makes impact on those tough cultural, right? This is where we're going as a culture and, and your value is not aligned with the culture, right? So what are, you, what are your thoughts on, on are we still able to maintain that in a remote environment or, or we have to figure different things out? Well, I think you have to be more intentional, you know, mm -hmm. because in the old days, um, you might just kind of, you know, walk by somebody's office and say, hey, let's grab a coffee or, hey, let me take you to lunch, right? You're the boss and you're like, hey, let's go grab lunch. This is, you know, and the employee's like, this is great. I get mm -hmm. some alone time with the boss. You know, now, <laughs> unless you're stalking people and you're yeah. driving around town and you're stopping by, not going to happen. I <laughs> encourage you to do. Yeah. Um, it's a different kind of uh kind of situation. And so some companies are still doing it very, really well. Um, for example, some companies are, are sending out holiday gifts to the homes of people, right? Mm -hmm. They're not just saying, well, we're not in the office, so everyone isn't getting a turkey this year or whatever. They're making it a point to thank their employees and they're doing it in different ways. Mm -hmm. So it's different ways of now, you know, but bringing those staff, you know, their, their belief system on the same levels instead of simply just you know, sending them e-card or something, you know, I think uh, it's physical gift still makes a lot more difference, I guess, right? Yeah, I mean, I have one client who um, is trying to make the lives of her employees easier and she is sending them like, you know, home food delivery service just for, um, you know, catered meals to be delivered to her employees' homes so that they are freed up to spend time with their families. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it probably costs the same as bringing lunch in for everyone. Yeah. Uh, and she's just figured out another way to make it work. 
Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, bringing everybody on the same page, there's no value. You know, you cannot put a value on that, right? It doesn't matter. Even it costs you a little more or costs you whatever, but still you connecting with the people and you showing that, hey, listen, you care about them. Um, it's not just about the job. You, you really care about them. But what's even more important is you are engaging their family or mm-hmm. their roommates. I mean, their roommates are watching, you know, you're not just sending food for one person, right? Mm-hmm. And their roommates are watching this come in and they're like, well, why the heck am I working for this company? Mm-hmm. I, I should be working for these people, yeah. you know? So it is a great way to get the word out. And people are on Instagram and Facebook and showing everyone, look what my employer just sent, you know? So it really elevates you and will help in your efforts to attract talent. Mm-hmm. Does a great job for brand building, right? So if you're building a brand, definitely, you know, the word gets out, you know, not only one person, the whole family can then, then take the word yeah, out. Yeah, and, and you want to be generous. I mean, you really mm-hmm. want to be generous. This is not the time to, you know, keep your wallet tight. Yeah, yeah. So business leaders, you know, uh, like myself, we, we all struggle. Definitely talent is one of our biggest issues. And we, you know, the challenge is also on the revenue side. We still have to move the business forward, you know, next year as well. So we've got to find a balance between those two. Hey, you know, I want to make sure that my teams are tight. They are taken care of, but I also need to move a business forward. How are you finding that, you know, what are your thoughts on a business leader who's trying to balance those two, uh, two uh, sides and uh, trying to grow a company and trying to grow a team at the same time? I would tell that leader that he or she is better off having like 10 superstars and paying these people extremely well than having a team of 20 people of which, you know, 18 of them are mediocre. Mm -hmm. Definitely. That makes sense. Your product, your, your output gets much higher, right? Your productivity is much higher with with those people who really buy into what you're trying to do. Yes. Okay. Interesting. So, what do you see in a, I, you know, um, from a business leader standpoint or from an employee standpoint, where do you think the job market, you know, the talent, is there, you know, what do you see the outcome out of it? You know, we all struggling with the talent. You, you know, where do you see that is, is have, you know, going on for next few, few, you know, 2022? I know a lot of business leaders, they're trying to plan their strategy for 2022. They, you know, this is the time they all go through it, what they have to plan for next year. What are the, some of the items they can keep in mind to plan for next year? Well, <clears throat> I will say this, and if you have a talent strategy that you developed prior to the pandemic, it is absolutely worthless. Mm -hmm. And so you have to have a new talent strategy. And that doesn't mean just putting on paper more of the same of what you've been doing if that hasn't worked. And, you know, today there are no more borders, right? You can work anywhere. And so that's, that's good and not so good, meaning you have more access as a business owner to talent globally than Mm -hmm. ever before. On the other hand, global companies have access to your people as well. And so you can't just come up with one strategy and think, oh, this is gonna work. So you gotta mix both. You could have a local talent and you gotta go globally and find a talent, which you're saying that, you know, to compete in a market. Absolutely. Wow. So does that, doesn't this create a challenge for you to, you know, to, to have your, you know, create your culture when you're working with the teams globally, you know, how do you, how do you maintain the talent if you work with the multiple teams overseas and, and you have a local team as well, which is totally different cultural values you're trying to bring in the uh, same umbrella? Well, companies have been doing this for hundreds of years, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, look at all these global companies. So working globally is nothing new. Um, it's just being a little, if it's new to you, it's being more sensitive to cultural differences Mm -hmm. and that you can, you know, read up on or work with an executive or a coach, somebody who has worked globally like myself, you know, you can, there's many ways to get comfortable with that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I go under the premise that people are people and they all really want the same things. I mean, they Mm want to be treated with respect they want to be paid for the value that they bring to an organization. And they want to know that the work they're doing matters. Mm-hmm. And that doesn't matter if you are based in China or if you're based here in Canada or the U.S. Mm-hmm. So, you know, those those principles apply all over the world. Nice. Beautiful. So you got to correct me at this. You know, but, uh, we were talking about this before. Is the government helping or government causing more issues for business leaders or an, an economy general? You know, I know government's, you know, throwing a lot of money in the economy and, uh, you know, definitely you have a different take on it. What are your thoughts on it? Is that one of the reasons that people, um, you know, because there's so much free money in an in, in economy that people hesitant to, uh, you know, take a job offers? Well, as you and I talked about, um, 
I have spoken about at many different conferences and I work with my clients on what I call the great refusal to work lie. And a lot of business owners are blaming the government for the fact that nobody wants to come work for them. Mm -hmm. But I would challenge those people. And I would say, let me see if I understand this. Uh, I'm going into a restaurant next door that is fully staffed yet you can't get people. So Mm -hmm. explain to me how that's the government, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, it's just that they don't want to work for you. And, you know, as much as countries have given, you know, different um, amounts of money to help people who through this, through this pandemic, I don't know anyone who has stockpiled money because a lot of these uh, countries have stopped giving out additional mm-hmm. money and unemployment benefits and things like that. I don't know anyone who's put 50, 60, hundred thousand dollars away, you know, workers and that they could just sit back now and do nothing. I mean, mm-hmm. do you? Yeah. So what, what we're saying is that's a leadership issue, not, not a government issue. It's just, uh, you failed as a leader. If, if you're dealing with that problem, you simply say that's you failed as a leader. You just haven't built the company attractive enough that people want to come and work for you. Yeah, you have to stop blaming everyone else and start it, and start looking inside and saying, okay, what's my role in this? Mm-hmm. I mean, we saw the same thing when as soon as these subsidies here in the U.S. went away, if you looked at the states that um, ended them earlier, there was no difference. People were mm-hmm. still not able to hire people. So you can't just say it was the government. Mm-hmm. Wow, very interesting. So let's talk about people. Um, you know, um, the time has been downtime. Everybody working remotely. Would you still expect same kind of you know uh, a learning curve or or a growth cycle for people? They need to take a training and they need to develop themselves. They still need to uh, go on a personal development. Would you still expect the same? Or or uh, you know companies are setting back and say, listen, we're not gonna you know spend money or we simply not gonna invest time into it for now until the COVID's finished. Then we'll go back on a personal development site. Well, I don't know if COVID's ever going to be finished. <laughs> I see. So uh, my suggestion is if that's your strategy, um, you're going to find that people are going to be poaching your people left and right. And when they pick up, the, when they call into your company or to their, you know, send them a message on LinkedIn, your people are going to be out of there. So yeah. this is not the time to not invest. Mm-hmm. This is the time where you really want to create a strong relationship. And the way some of my clients are doing that is they are doubling down, like they are hiring me to come in and be an executive coach to to their high potentials. They're Mm -hmm. having me work with their leaders who are good, but want to be great. And they're really demonstrating to their team, we're in this for the long run and we are here to develop you and you are not going to get this somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And that's the strategy you have to have if you want to retain people. So you train more, you, you definitely, you know, provide them all the tools and technology to be, you know, uh, uh, personal development and, and put them in a spot where they can develop and they can learn more and be an asset to your company and also add a value to their careers as well, right? Absolutely. Interesting. So uh, generally speaking, who, so how do you help a company, Zara? But, you know, do you work with the HR departments or, or a president, of the, you know, on, on executive level? So, so what level you uh, come in in a company and help them to, uh, you know, build the strategies? Well, I generally work with the CEO or members of the executive team in developing the talent strategy that will attract and keep the best people. And we, it always comes down to, no matter what you do, it always comes down to great leadership. Mm-hmm. And so I will then be an advisor to those leaders on talent and helping them make the right decisions so that they can attract and keep the best people. And then I also will work as an executive coach. And sometimes I'll do um, development programs to help them turn their entire team into a recruiting machine. Mm -hmm. So do they do these business leaders know what they're up against as a problem or you have to help them discover the problem? But, you know, so do they know some of the symptoms, what they're trying to, you know, what they're dealing with? Or you can help them to learn the problem and discover it and then build a strategy from their one. Oh, they know. <laughs> they know because they call me and they're like, oh, I've been trying to fill this job for six months and nothing is happening. Or we just lost our you know, entire sales team and we are we are with we don't know what to do. Mm-hmm. You know, they know. 
So turnover is one of the indication and not filling the jobs is another indication that those are the couple indication that you're going to need help from somebody like you. Yes. And they also, if they're doing employee engagement surveys and the feedback they're receiving says that people want, you know, to be developed and they're seriously considering the feedback they receive, because not every company does, Mm -hmm. um, they will reach out and say, you know, we would like to talk to you about uh, your coaching services. Mm -hmm. So generally speaking, do they, you know, what kind of issues are when people start working on it? What kind of issues, what kind of struggles they they go through when they're trying to, you know, building HR strategy, I take it that is is one of those items that's going to change your culture quite a bit. It's going to change the way you operate operationally or uh, the other way. So what kind of challenges they they go through uh, on the journey when they build a new strategy? Well, the challenge is always, you know, committing to making those changes and the implementation Right. Because, you know, anyone can create a strategy and then it can sit on the desk for years. It's really more about, you know, how do we best implement what we just committed to do? Mm -hmm. And that's where when I'm working with the CEO or the VP of sales or the COO, that's the area we focus on making sure that, okay, this is what we define we're going to do. Now we have to implement. Mm -hmm. So change management, management, I would say one of the issues that, you know, definitely change is big for any company. You know, they have to generate a revenue the way, you know, the, the business goals they have to meet. But at the same time, they're changing the, the, the way they approach their, their, their talent, right? Well, I believe that mm-hmm. all management is change management. Mm-hmm. I mean, every day I get up, I don't know what's going to happen. Right? Yeah, yeah. It's going to be a change, right? Mm-hmm. I have to deal with it. So, um, you know, I might have a new program to implement. I might have something I have to eliminate. Every day is change. Mm-hmm. Very interesting. So what are some of the uh, you know, stuff business leaders can do? Um, you know, definitely your books are there. Um, where else can they go find information by you? And what can, you know, if they want to do some, uh, you know, learning during these holidays, where can they go find some information and uh, get to know you a little better? Well, I'm, I do a lot of my, um, I do a lot of LinkedIn lives. So mm-hmm. if they search around on LinkedIn, um, if they want to connect with me, if they mention your podcast, I'm happy to take their, accept their invitation. Um, I've written hundreds, if not thousands of articles. Um, mm-hmm. You know, all you have to do is a Google search, Roberta Matchison, and my name will come up. Or you can come to my website and see some of the many articles and blog posts that I have there. Yeah, definitely. I'm going to include links to all that, those, that, that you know, the literature uh, below this video. But your books are available on Amazon. People can go just uh, buy those books on Amazon. Yes, my books are available on Amazon or wherever you buy your books. Beautiful. So any message you want to leave for business leaders or, or for uh, you know, the teams that are working together during this time? Any, any thoughts or any message you want to leave for them? And, and say, listen, you know, this is what you got to do. Sure. Well, I want to leave the message that you know, this whole talent thing, isn't going away anytime soon. Mm -hmm. I hear people say, oh, you know, in 2022, it's going to be better. It is not going to get better. If it does, I will take all of you to dinner. Okay, (laughs) It's not going to get better. If you look at the demographics, if you look at the situation where we're at, I mean, it's not going to get better. And so you have to take your head out of the sand and ask yourself, what do we need to do in 2022 and beyond differently so that we are the place that all of these people who are running away from their employers come to. Mm -hmm. So you gotta, you gotta do some of those things. You gotta build strategies around having a virtual discussions and all that stuff. So you have to build everything around it. You know, this is going to be part of it. It's just a new norm, what what we're saying. Absolutely. Very interesting. Um, so I want to thank you so much for your time. I want to I apologize again for Miss, uh, you know, my, my uh, lack of uh, staying on top of the meeting. Thank you so much for you know uh, accommodating the time. But you know, definitely I learned so much. I'm gonna definitely order your books as well. Business leaders who are watching, I will definitely recommend. Hey, listen, check out your books, check out your uh, blogs, and also connect with you. You know, sometime uh, you know we don't business leaders. We have so many blind spots, and the talent is not our our top skill set. You know, to maintain the talent, sometimes we're so busy in a focus on building a business and, and we leave a little bit uh, details out. So definitely learn from you, connect with you and, and chat with you and, uh, you know, definitely different perspective and, uh, and go from there. Well, I've enjoyed our conversation. Thank you so much for time. Have yourself a great day. You too. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye.